The Dark Enlightenment, also known as the Neoreactionary Movement, Neoreaction and abbreviated NRX by its proponents, is an anti-democratic, anti-liberal, and reactionary movement that considers itself to be the antithesis to the Enlightenment. It broadly rejects egalitarianism and the view that history shows inevitable progression towards greater liberty and enlightenment, thus it is in part a reaction against weak historiography. The movement favors a return to older societal constructs and forms of government, including support for monarchism and other forms of leadership such as a neo camelist CEO of a joint stock republic, coupled with a conservative or economic nationalist approach to economics. Proponents generally also espouse socially conservative views including traditionalist opinions on gender roles, race relations, and immigration. A 2013 TechCrunch article describes neo-reactionaries as an informal community of bloggers and political theorists who have been active since the 2000s. Steve Saylor and Hans Hermann Hopper are described as contemporary forerunners of the movement, and neo-reactionaries are also said to draw influence from philosophers such as Thomas Carlyle and Julius Evola. Writing in Tacky's magazine, Nicholas James Pell notes that besides American computer scientist Curtis Yarvin and English author and philosopher Nick Land, other prominent NRX voices include Monarchist transhumanist Michael Anisimov, Catholic anarchist Bryce Lilly Burt, post-libertarian escape artist Jim, and the snarky satirists of Radish. The Dark Enlightenment has been described as an early school of thought in the alt-right. Some critics have also labeled the movement as neo-fascist. A 2016 piece in New York Magazine notes that neo-reaction has a number of different strains, but perhaps the most important is a form of post-libertarian futurism that, realizing that libertarians aren't likely to win any elections, argues against democracy in favor of authoritarian forms of government." Yarvin, for example, argues that a libertarian democracy is simply an engineering contradiction, like a flying whale or a water-powered car. Topic. Summary of core ideas Central is a belief in freedom's incompatibility with democracy. This neo-reactionary idea comes from libertarians like Peter Thiel, as indicated by Nick Land's coverage of an April 2009 Cato Unbound discussion in his essay, The Dark Enlightenment, Yarvin's preferred system named neocameralism. After Frederick William I of Prussia's system of Prussian cameralism is a system in which a business owns the country, which is structured as a joint stock corporation divided up into shares, and run by a CEO to maximize profit. Peter Thiel and Patry Friedman have backed the Seasteading Institute as one possible way of building fiefdoms free of outside regulation and law. Neo reactionary Michael Perelou proposes that President Donald Trump seize more power by cancelling the United States Constitution, declaring martial law law and replacing the government with the Trump Organization. Similarly, Google engineer Justine Tunney circulated a petition to appoint Google chairman Eric Schmidt as CEO of America. Some neo-reactionary futurists focus more on the use of technology to defeat the state, for example, through transhumanist accelerationism in which the select few free themselves from the bonds of the state by evolving into superintelligent human-computer hybrids. One proponent of such ideas is Michael Anisimov, an advocate of eugenics, who in the words of Mark O'Connell, "...has in recent years basically cornered the white supremacy singularity crossover market," and become, "...something of a pariah from the transhumanist movement." Rejecting the notion that all humans are created equal, Anisimov believes that there are already disparities in intelligence between existing races and that transhuman technologies will create further disparities in power. He claims that aristocratic systems are more financially stable and efficient than democratic or communist systems. <laughs> History and etymology Dylan Matthews argues that neo-reaction draws on the racialist, traditionalist and isolationist arguments of paleoconservatism as well as paleoconservatives' belief that the mainstream is trying to crush them. Differences between the two movements are that paleoconservatives are more religious and have more faith in the United States Constitution and Republican ideals generally. 
Rick Searle draws parallels between neo-reactionaries and late 19th-century figures like Friedrich Nietzsche, Fyodor Dostoyevsky, Charles Maurers, and Vilfredo Pareto. George Orwell also used the term, "...neo-reactionary," in an As I Please column for Tribune in 1943—although not in the sense of the present-day subculture. In 2007 and 2008, Curtis Yarvin—writing under the pen name Mencius Moldbug, articulated what would develop into Dark Enlightenment thinking. Yarvin's theories were later the subject of Nick Land, who first coined the term, "...dark enlightenment," in his essay of the same name. The term, "...dark enlightenment," is a play on words for the knowledge supposedly gained in the Enlightenment. According to Land, where the progressive Enlightenment sees political ideals, the Dark Enlightenment sees appetites." On the view that the tendency of sovereign power in democracies is to devour society. Yarvin had originally called his ideology formalism a term inspired from legal formalism, but Arnold Kling used the term, the neo-reactionaries. As a noun in July 2010 to describe Yarvin and his followers and the term was quickly adopted by the subculture. According to Adam Riggio, the embryo of the neo-reactionary movement lived in the community pages of Lesrong. Social Matter is a major online publication and thought machine for neo-reaction. Neo-reactionaries have often declined reporters' requests for interviews, explaining that journalists—as manufacturers of consent—are their mortal enemy. When the Atlantic political affairs reporter Rosie Gray attempted to interview neo-reactionary leaders, Yarvin suggested she instead speak directly to my WH cutout, cell leader." A sarcastic reference to widely reported yet unsubstantiated rumors that Yarvin had ties to White House chief strategist Steve Bannon—while Nick B. Steves told her she was ill-suited to write about neo-reaction because, "...115 IQ people are not generally well equipped to summarize 160 IQ people." Neo-reactionary writings, particularly those by Yarvin and Land, are sometimes viewed as so verbose, dense, discursive, detached and «edgy» as to be inaccessible and self-marginalizing. Ryan Summers wrote that neo-reactionary imagery is often infused with hyper-masculine ideas of men, such as tanks, spacecraft, Greek gods and soldiers with guns. Topic. Relation to other movements Topic. Relation to the alt-right Some consider the Dark Enlightenment as an early school of thought in the alt-right, or as its most theoretically-minded branch. In particular, one philosopher with Landian ideas, Jason Reza Georgiani, co-founded altright.com and spoke at the 2016 National Policy Institute conference led by Richard Spencer. Some critics have also labeled the Dark Enlightenment as neo-fascist, or as an acceleration of capitalism to a fascist point. Although Land argues this is inaccurate because fascism is a mass anti-capitalist movement. Land states, NRX doesn't think the alt-right is very serious. It's an essentially anti-Anglo-American philosophy, in its Dugenist core, which puts a firm ceiling on its potential. But then, the NRX analysis is that the age of the masses is virtually over. Riled up populist movements are part of what is passing, rather than of what is slouching toward Bethlehem to be born. James Kirchick notes that although neo-reactionary thinkers disdain the masses and claim to despise populism and people more generally, what ties them to the rest of the alt-right is their unapologetically racist element, their shared misanthropy and their resentment of mismanagement by the ruling elites. Duesterberg observes, "...as a rule the alt-right is scattered, anonymous and obscure." Thriving, as the curious metaphor has it, in the dark corners of the Internet, by contrast, neo-reaction is centralized and public, darkness enlightened. Criticism 
A criticism of neo-reaction is that its pessimistic appraisal of progressivism's results dismisses many advances that have been made, including greater freedom for women, racial minorities and homosexuals, increased security for the elderly and unemployed, greater access to health care by the poor, steep declines in world poverty, improved air quality, greater religious tolerance and racial integration, lower crime rates, and an absence of world wars since 1945. They also point to the culture of London, whose population is majority non-white, and the high standard of living and continental peace in the European Union. Another criticism is that global manufacturing patterns limit the economic independence that sovereign states can have from one another. Some of the critics who felt the Dark Enlightenment's pessimistic assessment was unsupported by economic data formed the Grey Enlightenment, Ryan T. Summers observes. For the most part, neo-reactionaries do not emphasize anti-Semitic views as other alt-right counterparts. Topic. See also. Alt-light. Aristocracy. Cultural conservatism. Enlightened absolutism. Fusionism. Manosphere. Natural order Neo-nationalism Paleolibertarianism Reactionary modernism Social Darwinism Speculative realism Traditionalist conservatism Traditionalist school <laughs>